Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlbumyTutors.com and welcome to this video on Entropy Change 1. Now this is the first video that looks into entropy calculations uh, and there are a few other videos as well. So if you look on the uh, playlist, the thermodynamics playlist, you'll be able to see some other videos to do with entropy change. So in this video we're going to show you some um, three key equations that are used and helping us to calculate the entropy change for a reaction uh, and we're going to go through it as a worked example as well. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at what the entropy change is. So entropy change can be used by measuring three simple equations that we've got here. The first one is the entropy of the system. So the entropy of the system is the products minus reactants. So this is basically the entropy change that happens in the actual beaker. So you find out the total entropy for the products and subtract it away from the total entropy of the reactants. Okay, so the next equation we're going to use is the entropy of the surroundings. So now we know what the entropy change is of the equation. For the entropy change for the actual reaction that's taking place in the beaker, we need to know the entropy change for the surroundings. So that's the air that's around the actual beaker. And we can calculate this using another simple equation. So this is the entropy of the surroundings is minus delta H, and delta H is the enthalpy change measured in kilojoules per mole, and that will be significant when we calculate some ones here uh, a little bit later on, uh, divided by the temperature, and the temperature's got to be in Kelvin as well, so make sure that you convert any temperatures that are in degrees Celsius that may be in degrees Celsius into Kelvin first. Okay, so I'm just going to put the units up there just so we can see what we've got. So the delta H, which is this, is measured in kilojoules per mole and our temperature has got to be in Kelvin so that's really 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 important okay uh, then once we've done that then we um, take these two and we're going to need to work out the entropy of the uh, whole thing so that's the uh, reaction that's happening in the beaker and take into account the entropy change of the surroundings as well so um, this one is called the total entropy change uh, and this is delta S total equals the system, entropy of the system, which is up here, plus the entropy of the surroundings, which you've just worked out here. And like I say, we're going to go through a worked example to show you how you'd actually work this out. Okay, so here it is here. So it's calculate total entropy change for the following reaction under standard conditions. So we've got two lots of calcium reacting with oxygen to form two lots of calcium oxide. We also have an enthalpy change of minus 1270 kilojoules per mole. This is an exothermic reaction because of the negative sign that's in the front. Uh, we've also given, been given some entropy data as well. Uh, and this is entropy of the different components in the reaction. So we've got calcium, oxygen and calcium oxide. And the units for entropy are joules per kelvin per mole. You've got to make sure that they are in joules kelvin per mole. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look and start and work this out. So we need to work out the total entropy. So the total entropy, as we showed on the bottom there, is the system plus surroundings. So the first thing we need to do is work out the entropy of the system first. That's the entropy change within the reaction. So um, we're going to do this in a, write this in blue. So it stands out a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to work out the entropy, which is uh, delta S of the system. Okay, so the entropy change of the system is basically going to be products minus reactants. So the products is calcium oxide. So the um, calcium oxide is 40, but remember we're making two moles of this, and this one is per one mole. This is only for one mole, so we need to double that number. So that's going to be 80 for the two moles of calcium oxide that's being formed. And um, we're going to subtract that away from the uh, entropy of the reactants. So again, the reactants, we've got two lots of 41.6 because we've got two lots of calcium there um, and then also we've got a molecule of oxygen which is just 205 there so if we add all them up two lots of this and one lot of this we should get a number of 288.2 uh, and again this is in joules per kelvin per mole so this is the entropy change uh, and if we put that into our calculator we should get the entropy of the system uh, and it should come out at minus 208 Point two, uh, and the units for this is joules per kelvin per mole. There we go. Okay, so there's our first bit, entropy of the system. Uh, and again, we need to work out total entropy, so we need the surroundings as well. So we're going to work that out. 
So delta x of the surroundings. Okay, so the delta s of the surroundings is minus delta h divided by t. Now our enthalpy value is minus already. So when we put two minuses together, we get a positive. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna put minus and then minus one, two, seven, zero. So this is in kilojoules per mole. But you can see we've got two minuses together. So effectively that's gonna turn it into a plus, into a positive. So um, you can either put the two negatives into your calculator and it should come out with the right answer, or you can just get rid of them all together and just write one, two, seven, zero because the two negatives cancel, the two negatives together give you a plus. Uh, but notably, you've got kilojoules per mole here. Now our entropy value is in joules per Kelvin per mole. So what we have to do is convert the kilojoules per mole, this number here, into joules per mole. And the easy way of doing that is just multiplying by a thousand to get it into joules. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply that by a thousand, and I'm just gonna add that onto the end there. Times 10 to the three is exactly the same as multiplying by a thousand. Okay, uh, and then we're gonna divide by the uh, temperature. So this is the temperature under standard conditions. So standard conditions is 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure. So this is just going to be 298 uh, Kelvin. Now this is the energy, this is the temperature of the actual surroundings, remember, not the actual system. We know that actually this thing's exothermic, but the actual surroundings are at standard temperature conditions. So that's why it's 298. So that's why it might look a bit odd, even though the reaction's actually getting warmer. This is about the surroundings. So if we put that into our calculator, um, we should get a value uh, of 4261. Uh, and that should be 0.7, uh, and it's joules per Kelvin per mole. All right, brilliant. Okay, so there's our number there, and there's our other number there. Right, so we're actually going to use these numbers now, these two numbers we've worked out, to work out our final thing, which is the total entropy of the uh, system. So we're going to put here delta S total. Okay, uh, and that's literally just system plus surroundings. So the system is uh, uh, minus 208.2. Uh, and we're gonna add that to our number here, which is 4261.7. This is the entropy of the actual surroundings. Uh, and then we should get a value, which is 4053. 453.5 joules per Kelvin per mole. Right, now this number has significance as well. And um, because it's a positive value, that tells us that this reaction is kinetically feasible. And um, that means it will go in a, it will actually react spontaneously, or it can react spontaneously at standard conditions. So that's 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals of pressure. So this value, as you can see, is a positive value. So this reaction should happen spontaneously at those standard conditions. Um, numbers which come out as negative are described as not kinetically feasible, uh, and so therefore uh, are not spontaneous under standard room temperature and pressure conditions. So you've got to make sure you look at that number really, really carefully, and make sure you're able to multiply these numbers here really carefully make sure that you include the minus as well and two minuses turn it into a positive um, and also make sure that you can convert this value here the nth value into joules first otherwise your number will come out a little bit wrong uh, and you won't get the marks for your final answer neither for this bit as well so really important little steps there make sure you remember these equations as well and um, they're pretty straightforward they're pretty short equations uh, but nonetheless vital to make sure you get all those marks in the exam. That's it. Bye-bye.